Hello everyone, welcome to MMA at Midnight. I'm your host, Sean Yuretsu, and in this week's episode, we're going to preview UFC 221 in Perth, Australia. Yoel Romero versus Luke Rockhold. And we're also going to have another segment of uh, Midnight's of Our Past. In this one, we're going to continue with the, the Pride Heavyweight Grand Prix from 2004 with Critical Countdown. Let's get started with the UFC 221 in Perth, Australia. There's a lot of good fights on this card. And uh, also on the prelims, there's a lot of up-and-comers to keep an eye on. Um, first one is Daichi Abe. Uh, he's 6-0. He's a Pancrase vet. This is his second fight in the UFC. Definitely keep an eye on him. Um, he's facing Luke Jumo. So um, that, that'll be an interesting fight on the prelims. Next, uh, Teruto Ishihara. A lot of you guys might know him who are like the hardcore Japanese MMA fans. Um, he's a really good fighter. His last fight, he won, uh, beat Ronaldo Dai by decision. Um, he's got two wins by knockout in the UFC. And he also fought in uh, VTJ in Shudo. And he has a bunch of knockouts over there as well. So um, I'm excited to see him, uh, see what he's going to do next. And he's uh, facing Jose Alberto Canunez. Uh, he's Jose's on a three-fight win streak in the UFC right now. So this is a good battle between uh, up-and-comers. We're going to see who's going to break through. Um, I'm really excited for this matchup. Keep an eye on for that. Um, we have Ross Pearson versus Mizuto Hirota. Um, a lot of you guys know Ross Pearson. He's been in the UFC forever. Good hands, brawler. Always pretty much puts on an exciting fight. Um, he's he's on a four fight losing streak streak though he's pretty much on his way out. Um, his last uh, he got the last fight he got knocked out by Dan Hooker, um, and it, it's been a long time since um, Ross Pearson has actually gotten a finish. Last time he finished anyone was Sam Stout, and that was in March 2015. So um, yeah, it's been almost three years since he's finished anybody. Uh, so it's it's gonna be. Um, it's going to be curious to see what, what he does in this fight and what, what happens. Um, Mizuto Hirota, uh, this guy's fought everywhere. Anyone, any of you Japanese MMA fans know this dude. Uh, he's fought in, uh, in Deep, Shudo, um, from the Sengoku days. Um, he had that six Superman um, punch knockout over Ryan Schultz in Sengoku. Um, he fought Aoki on New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve in Japan. Um, in his last fight, he lost decision though to Alexander Volkanovsky. So I'm looking forward, um, looking for him to uh, bounce back from that loss over, and uh, get a win over Ross Pearson. Um, like I said, Ross Pearson's on his way out. He hasn't been doing well. So um, I think this is going to be a good showcase for Mizuto Hirota to to stand out. And uh, it's going to be a good fight. You know, uh, both these guys always bring it. So it should be an action-packed fight. Um, in the next fight, we have Alexander Volkanovsky versus Jeremy Kennedy. Alexander Volkanov Volkanovsky has a 16-1 record. He's on a 13-fight win streak. And um, his last uh, three were in the UFC. Um, he's facing Jeremy Kennedy, who's 11-0. He's an undefeated fighter from Canada. Um, this is his fourth UFC fight. In his last fight, he beat Kyle Bokniak. Um, so this should be an interesting fight. Both these guys, you know, like I said, uh, Kennedy undefeated, Volkanovski on a 13-fight win streak. This is going to be a good fight. In the next fight, we have Israel Adesana versus uh, Rob Wilkinson. Um, Israel, Israel Adesana, if you haven't seen this guy, uh, man, he, he's, he's like nothing else. You know, people talk about um, MVP, like uh, his movement, his striking. This guy's like that, and he might be even on another level, like, to on a next level from that. Like, this guy, his movement's crazy. He's undefeated. Um, he's done kickboxing, ton of sick knockouts. If you haven't seen his highlights, check out his highlights on YouTube. This guy's intense. Um, he's finished Melvin Gillard. Like, this guy finishes everybody. All his fights are by knockout or TKO. So, um, so definitely uh, keep an eye on him. He's fighting Rob Wilkinson. Um, he lost, uh, Rob Wilkinson lost his UFC debut to C.R. Badrazara, but um, this is going to be an another tough test for him. You know, he hasn't had an easy um, <laughs> easy start in the UFC, though this is going to be tough for him. But uh, like I said, definitely keep an eye on Israel Adesana. If you haven't seen his highlights, check him out. This fight's going to be crazy. Like, when you watch this dude, it's like nothing you've ever seen before. So definitely check him out. Um, in the next fight, we have Damian Brown versus Dong Hyun Kim. Um, Dong Hyun Kim is on a two-fight win streak. Um, he beat Gomi in his last fight by TKO. Um, I, I, I'm definitely picking him as a favorite. To, um, I don't know what the betting odds are, but I'm, I'm picking him to win this over Damian Brown. Damian Brown's on a two-fight losing streak. Um, 
his record's 17 and 11. He's he hasn't he's never really impressed me with any of his fights. So look for Dong Hyun Kim to um uh, kind of come out and have a good fight with this with this again um in this one against Damian Brown. Um, and the next one we have Soperbeck Safarov uh, versus Tyson Pedro. This is going to be an exciting fight. You know uh, these guys are big guys. They're going to throw down. Um, Tyson Pedro six and one, two and one in the UFC. Um, he lost his last fight to Alir Latifi, but you know there's no shame in that. Alir Latifi's a, a really tough fight for anybody at that weight division. Um, he, he's a strong wrestler. He's powerful. So don't hold that against Tyson Pedro. This dude, he's going to come out and try and go for the finish. Um, he put on a really good performance against Paul Craig and uh, Khalil Roundtree. Um, Saperbeck Safarov, he's 8-1. and one. He lost his debut in the UFC against Gian Vellante. So look for him to try and um, make a, an impressive, uh, sh uh, impressive fight, an impressive show on this one. Um, in the next fight, we have Jing Jingling uh, Jing Lee um, versus versus Jake Matthews. Jing Liang Li, um, the leech. This dude's awesome. Um, he's been in the UFC for a while now. Maybe a lot of people don't see um, his fights because they're usually the overseas or the fight pass ones. But this guy's really good. He's on a four fight win streak. He TKO'd Zach Otto in his last fight. Um, he KO'd Bobby Nash. He, he KO'd Diego Lima. Like this dude's no joke. So keep an eye out for him. Um, he's he's facing Jake Matthews, who's five and three in the UFC. He was on the Ultimate Fighter. Um, Jake Matthews, even though he has uh, some losses in the UFC, they're against good good opponents. You know, one was against James Vick, one of his losses, and the other one was against Kevin Lee. So um, he's been fighting tough competition. So this is going to be another tough outing for him. So that's another fight to keep an eye on. And the next we have Cyril Asker versus Taya Tuovasa. Uh, Taya Tuovasa is six and zero. Oh. You know he has that um, flying knee knockout over Rashad Coulter in his UFC debut. Um, Cyril Asker, he's had a tough time in the UFC. He's two and two in the UFC. Um, he was finished by Walt Harris and Jared Cannonier. So I'm looking for maybe Taya Tuovasa to finish Sierra Lasker in this fight, but you never know what's going to happen. Anything can happen in this sport. Um, Sierra Lasker is a tough opponent, but that's just how I see it going. Um, next, we have Mark Hunt versus Curtis Blades in the co-main event. Um, everyone knows Mark Hunt, awesome striker, K1 striker. He's 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 a great like he has a great sprawl for someone his size and and someone who comes from a kickboxing background. So look for um. Look for Mark Hunt to, you know, I'm sure Curtis Blades is going to try and take him down. Look for him for the trying to get the sprawl or try and land some of his uppercuts. You know, maybe one of those uh, walk-off uppercut knockouts. Um, <laughs> also, um, Curtis Blades, he's 8-1 in his record, but his only loss was a doctor stoppage to Francis Ngannou. So, um, there's, you know, there's no shame in that. We know Francis is a beast, so... Look for Curtis Blades. You know, he's still young, so I'm sure he made a lot of adjustments from that fight as well. Um, maybe this is the the passing of the torch, you know, the old guard and the new guard. Like, it's, it's going to switch over. We'll see. You know, Mark Hunt isn't, isn't an easy fight for anybody, so this can easily go his way. He could easily knock out Curtis Blades. It could happen. But um, look for Curtis Blades to be, if he fights smart, look him to use his athleticism um, and his uh, speed and power, his wrestling, to try and uh, to get Mark Hunt down, maybe get a submission, some ground and pound. Um, we'll move on to the main event now. We have Yoel Romero versus Luke Rockhold. I'm really excited for this fight because um, Yoel Romero, this, this dude, he reminds me of like Sabretooth from the X-Men. This guy is like so athletic for someone that's like a beast this dude like is so hard to take down you can't hold him down like the way he scrambles in different positions and in transitions yoel romero is a beast and let alone he's got all these knockouts flying knee knockouts like he's exciting you know he, he's finished like weidman machida brunson and when he finishes guys he destroys them Yoel Romero is always exciting to, to uh, exciting to watch his fights. Whether you're a fan or not, Yoel Romero is awesome to watch. Um, Luke Rockhold, we know he got that um, win over David Branch in his last fight over, after he lost um, his belt uh, to Michael Bisbing. So Luke Rockhold, you know, we know he's been hungry. He wants his, his belt back, and this is for the interim belt. 
but um yoel romero is on, like i said this dude's like this dude's a monster this dude's like saber tooth you know he's 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 hard to take down he's got a granite chin and he just comes out to destroy and he's so athletic and fast explosive powerful um it's gonna be a good fight definitely a good fight to watch i'm leaning more towards yoel but rockwell's really well rounded um anything can happen so definitely a good fight to watch all these fights a lot of a lot of exciting matchups um it's gonna be a great night of fights <clears throat> In this week's midnight of our midnights of our past, we're going to do Critical Countdown 2004. This was the uh, the second round of the heavyweight Pride Grand Prix. There was a lot of good fights on there. Um, there was also uh, some fights that weren't part of the tournament that were really exciting as well. Um, the first fight of the night was Kazusi Sakuraba versus Nino Elvis Shembri. Um, in their first fight. Um, Sakuraba was dominating um, Nino Shembri and. Shembri ended up catching Sakuraba with a knee like near the end of the fight and ended up knocking Sakuraba out. It was totally unexpected. It was a comeback. Um, so this was the rematch. You know, Sakuraba, he wanted to get revenge for that loss. So this is a rematch. It was, um, it was kind of more of how the fight was going before the knockout. Sakuraba did really well in it. Exciting fight. Anytime you get to see Sakuraba, he's a legend. He's the greatest. Um... In the next fight, we had uh, R Quentin Rampage Jackson versus Ricardo Arona. Um, this is like one of the most famous finishes of all time in all of MMA. Uh, when uh, uh, Quentin Jackson powerbombed Ricardo Arona and knocked him out, um, and it just even before that, it was action. Like uh, Rampage was on on top, and uh, Ricardo Arona hit him with a huge up kick, and like. Rampage was just lying on Arona's stomach, like, and Arona was complaining to the ref that Rampage is out, Rampage is out, you know, and Rampage sat there for, like, 10, 15 seconds, like, recuperated before he did anything, you know, and when R Ricardo was, like, looking, he was looking for a triangle, and then Rampage just picks him up, like, like a craziest powerbomb I've ever seen, and just slammed him down, and, yeah, Arona was out cold. Um, if you've never seen that knockout, that's, like, one of the most vicious, brutal knockouts ever. Um, that slam was intense. Definitely watch that one. Um, in the next one, we had uh, Mark Hunt. This uh, Mark Hunt made his uh, MMA debut in this fight versus um, yeah, Yoshida. This is this was um, Mark Hunt uh, transitioned over to Pride because um, in the MMA because like he saw people like Mirko doing really well who transitioned over from K1 kickboxing. So people like Mark Hunt came over and wanted to give it a shot. And, um, even though Mark Hunt didn't win win his um, his debut, he ended up losing by armbar. That that shows to the heart of Mark Hunt. He didn't give up. He kept going. He came back to MMA and and look at where he is now. He's still fighting. He fought for the belt. He fought for the belt in Pride. He fought for the belt in UFC. Like so the fact that he's still at that top level after all these years is amazing. Mark Hunt. You know that guy's a, a true, uh, true warrior. That that's uh, that's amazing that he's still, um, still fighting now. Um, and then and um, getting to the heavyweight Grand Prix tournament in the first fight of the tournament, it was um, uh, first fight of the night of the second round of the tournament was uh, Noyo Ogawa versus Giant Silva. Um, this was kind of a given. Everyone knew it was going to happen. Giant Silva was kind of more of a you know, people, yeah, like say, like a sideshow fighter. He beat uh, Centurio in the in the first round, which is Centurio is like a uh, like a, a sumo wrestler. <clears throat> um, Noyo Gawa, you know, he 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 had a lot of fans in Japan. They were cheering him on, and, and it was good. You know, they wanted to have like the um, their hometown 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 guy in the tournament, which was really nice, and um, it kind of mixed it up. In the next round, we had Sergey Haritanov versus Semi Shilt. Um, this is this was um, a good matchup. Sergey was coming off that sick knockout over Ninja in the first round. Um, Semi Shilt had beat Dan McGee in the first round, <clears throat> and um, Sergey ended up just um, uh, messing up um, Semi pretty bad. He ended up getting a TKO win with some brutal ground and pound. Like he ended up just uh, mounting. Um, semi shilt and just landing like vicious ground and pound just just mess messied up um <laughs> made a mess of semi shilt's face 
Um, in the next fight, we had um, Heath Herring versus um, Noguera, number two. Um, this was their second fight. Um, this was an incredible finish by Noguera. He got him with the Anaconda choke. Yeah, it was... Um, Noguera back then, like, he really was was amazing. Like, he used to shock people with his submissions. It was really good. Um, it was an awesome Anaconda choke. If you've never seen that fight between them, um, watch it. That one is good. And in the main event, it was another fight for the the last fight of the round two for the heavyweight tournament. It was Fedor Emelianenko versus Kevin Randleman. Kevin Randleman was coming off that huge knockout win over Mirko Krokop in the first round. And um, Fedor was coming off the armbar win over Mark Coleman, um, Kevin Randleman's teammate. So they ended up meeting each other. This fight only lasted a minute and 30 seconds, but this is like the most am amazing like minute and 30 seconds in fighting you'll ever see. This fight is just nuts. Um, Randleman's explosive, powerful. He ended up uh, taking um, Fedor's back and doing the craziest suplex and just drops Fedor right on his head. If you've never seen this slam, this is one of the craziest slams you'll ever see. I think it's, it's, it's unreal, like... I don't even know how Fedor is still like, still alive or didn't break his neck. It was, it was crazy. He landed right on his neck. And when they show the slow-mo, you see Randleman like up in the air. Like not only did he suplex him, like he jumped into the suplex. Like all his body weight on top of Fedor as well. It was nuts. And what does Fedor do? He eats that slam like the champ that he is, the legend that he is. And he comes around and, and freaking gets the arm lock on Randleman and the fight is over. That's that's Fedor. Fedor was a, such a beast. Like there was no finishing him. That's why they used to call him Terminator. There was like the pictures of him with like the Terminator um, face um, that used to be around on the internet because that reason you couldn't put him away. Like that dude was awesome. Um, it was a great great tournament. It was another great uh, Pride event, and it was just uh, it was another one to build uh, that built up the anticipation for the finals. Um, this is the great thing about the tournaments. We have the, the Bellator Heavyweight Grand Prix continuing next week. So uh, I'm going to continue with some more of the, the Pride Heavyweight Grand Prix in the, the weeks to come. Thank you guys for joining me for this week's episode. And we'll see you for a post-fight special for UFC 221. And subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thank you. Bye.